welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Amy. Amy is a 1981 theatrical release. It's directed by Vincent McAviti, cinematography by Leonard J. South, editing by Greg McLaughlin, music by Robert F. Brenner, and it's written by Noreen Stone. Vincent McAviti and Leonard J. South I covered in the video about the Ghost of Cypress Swamp. Greg McLaughlin I covered in the video about A Tale of Two Critters, and Robert F. Brenner I covered in the video about The Young Runaways. All links will be in the description. Noreen Stone is best known for Brenda Starr, Nurse, and Dynasty. The film stars Jenny Agutter, Barry Newman, Otto Rechenberg, and Annette Fabre. Jenny Agutter plays Amy, and she's best known for The Avengers, Logan's Run, An American Werewolf in London, Child's Play 2, and Equus. Barry Newman plays Dr. Ben, and he's best known for Vanishing Point, The Limey, and Daylight. Otto Rechenberg plays Henry, and he's best known for this. This is his only acting credit. Nanette Fabre plays Malvina, and she's best known for Harper Valley PTA, The Bandwagon, The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex, and One Day at a Time. Amy is about a woman named Amy Medford leaving her husband to teach at a school for blind and deaf children. She plans to teach the deaf to speak. They do use American Sign Language in this film, and there is a scene where Henry is talking to Amy about name signs. It's a way you sign your name specifically and they say her name can be Amy on the lips because she's teaching speech. And this entire scene was used for educational purposes in schools. This movie was released on DVD in 2011 as part of Disney's Generations collection. The film was originally meant to be released on TV, but they changed their mind and released it theatrically. A wise choice, I think. The film's actually quite special. Technically speaking, you can tell it was supposed to be released on TV. The camera quality, the aspect ratio, and the overall technicality of the film is obviously shot for TV, but that doesn't take away from the technicality of the film. The camera movements are quite complex, and the lighting is quite delicious. It's quite dynamic, and I really enjoyed the technicality of this film. This film is a drama. There are no arguments about that right from the beginning. Amy is such a complex character. The first thing we see is her leaving a note and her wedding ring and then leaving her house. So she's obviously leaving her husband and we have no idea why yet. And then she shows up at this school for blind and deaf and wants to teach the deaf how to speak. And you just gather that she might have had a deaf child or something tragic happened to her. And that is the truth. Her husband told her she couldn't bear normal children. So they only had the one child and her child was deaf and he passed away when he was about six or seven and it destroyed her and her husband was ashamed that they had a deaf child because he wanted everything in his life to be perfect including her so he kept her as a trophy and didn't let her do anything imperfect and it was quite like it was complex and dramatic but so interesting and it's so fun to watch Amy open up to the people she's working with and teach these deaf children how to speak and stand up against the adversity of a school board that's telling her that deaf children can't speak and that the deaf and blind are stupid when that's so untrue. It is so beyond untrue. The deaf and blind just have a disability. They could be the most intelligent people in the world. They can be absolutely normal people. Some just can't hear and some just can't see. There's nothing wrong with them other than those that thing. So she's trying to, with the help of the superintendent and the other teachers at the school, stand up to the school board and say, deaf children can speak, they can learn to speak. Blind children can get around, they're not stupid, none of these children are stupid, they're all quite intelligent, and if you treat them like they're stupid, you're stupid. I also want to talk about Malvina. Her character development is so beautiful, her arc is extraordinary. She goes from being very adversarial with Amy, she taught the deaf children to sign, she taught them how to speak with sign language, and she's very protective of them and doesn't think they can learn to speak and doesn't want to give them false hope and thinking they can be normal, which obviously they can be, and she's coming from a place of love, but in doing that is also inhibiting these children. But she learns, her character arc is incredible. There's a scene where Henry's parents are finally coming to visit him at this school because they haven't had money to come and visit him. And he's doing the best as far as speaking, he's learned a lot, 
and he learned how to say the word mother so he could speak to his mom. And he was so focused on something, he forgot how to say it. So he turns to Malvina and tells her he forgot how to say mother. And she lets him feel the vibrations of her speaking. And he remembers and he says, thank you. And he goes in and we find out that his mother is blind. So he, she can't read sign language. So when he says mother, she has a full on breakdown because she heard her son speak for the first time. And in that moment, Malvina realizes how important it is that these deaf children learn how to speak and that they can learn how to speak. And the moment that she let Henry touch her cheek to feel her vibrations when she says mother and watch her mouth. I got so teary. I didn't cry. I was very surprised I didn't cry, but I got so teary and it was just such a beautiful moment. And then from that moment on, she's a lot warmer to Amy and she's a lot more accepting. And then later in the movie, she even tries to protect Amy from her husband. And it's such a beautiful arc to how they become friends and how she realizes that she was potentially holding the deaf children back and wants Amy there to teach them how to speak. It's very, very beautiful arc. Throughout the film, Amy and Dr. Ben are falling for each other, and this is by far my least favorite part of the film. I think it is so unnecessary. I think their chemistry is about a two on a scale of like a hundred. I don't think it's a good storyline to have inside this film. I think it's completely unnecessary. I think we need to focus on Amy finding who she is and helping these children and getting away from her husband. I think her falling for Dr. Ben is convenient and just there because it sells tickets. I don't know. I didn't like it at all. Every time they had a scene together that was meant to be, a, you know, like, ooh, they're flirting, they're in love, was cringy for me. And when he's trying to get her to cheat on her husband, even though like she hates her husband and left him, she's technically still married and that whole scene just was so gross to me and I think this movie would be a perfect 10 if it didn't have her falling in love with Dr. Ben. I think her falling in love with Dr. Ben really, really inhibited the movie for me. I did not enjoy those scenes at all. By far the best part of the movie is the children proving to everyone that thought they couldn't that they can speak. Henry is the light of the film. He is the best part. Otto Rechenberg did a fantastic job as Henry. He was absolutely delightful and so charming. And in the board of directors meeting when Henry and Amy are in there and Henry says yes we can speak and we need your help just to shut down the directors so well and that scene was so satisfying and so wonderful because the deaf can speak we can do everything normal people do just like blind people can do everything normal people do i mean come on people quite a few children die in this movie i'm really surprised i didn't cry at all i got teary in that one scene but no tears fell not a single one the first death was Amy's child, but we don't see that. We just know he's dead and that's quite sad. The second death was the small little four-year-old, soon to be five-year-old from influenza. That was so sad. I, my heart was so hurt for him, but also it was a little bit earlier in the movie, so I wasn't super attached yet, I feel like. The final child death, which is a 19-year-old, just shocked me. Like I was like, that for a solid two minutes when he died just because i couldn't believe it how they did it and that it happened and so i didn't cry it was very sad but i didn't cry i was just shocked more than anything amy medford's crap husband spends the entire film with a private investigator trying to find where amy has gone because she left a note saying she had to leave but she doesn't say where she's going leaves no hint whatever the private investigator finds where amy is and her crap husband shows up and Malvina lies to him and says there is no Amy at the school, but Amy comes around looking for Malvina and uh, ruins that. So Malvina tried to protect her in her beautiful character development, but with no success because Amy shows her face and the husband then proceeds to try everything to get Amy to come with him saying, we can have another child. We're perfect together. We can try again. I'll change. He tries every textbook answer and she says you treated me like this and you treated me like this and i only realized that it was my fault that i was letting you treat me like that 
and I'm not gonna let you treat me like that anymore. And it's such a beautiful moment. And then he says, Amy, you belong to me. And she says, I belong to myself, which is so good. Ugh. And then she just goes upstairs with Henry and he's left there to leave. It's such a fantastic moment. So true, by the way, everyone out there, even men, you belong to yourself. You can choose to share yourself with people, but you belong to yourself, just saying. It was such a beautiful moment, so empowering, so wonderful, and just proof that she grew and that she knew what she needed in her life and that she was adamant in staying. And it had nothing to do with Dr. Ben. And that is the best. He was all, you fell in love with another man. And she says, it has nothing to do if I fell in love with another man or not. I love it here with these children. I'm helping these children. I love these children. I want to stay here. This is what I'm meant to do. And it has nothing to do with Dr. Ben. And that's the best because it's the worst love story ever. Not the worst love story ever, but it's not good. And that was the best scene. It's the actual, that's the end. That is the end of the film. Mr. Medford leaves in a huff and she goes upstairs with Henry to stay there and teach the deaf how to speak. It's fantastic. That's all I really have to say about Amy. I actually really enjoyed this movie, save for the love story. So I think I'm gonna give it eight eye patches out of 10. To know what the eye patch reference is, you'll just have to watch the movie. Our total movie count is. Parent Death Toll and Cry Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not charged like you are, so you do you, and don't be Mr. Medford about it.